I'm sorry. Now, am I audible? Audible, right? Yes, yeah, I'm audible. live on you. Perfect. I'm live on with you. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just close this. I'll stop share. And wow. So 16 people joined in. That's a good one. Here you go. So this is what we are going to discuss today. Uh, where is my presentation? It's today's date, right? 15th of April. Okay, I was not able to start any batch in between February, March. March, I was not able to start anything because of my defense projects. So this is batch number 22, which I'm going to start. And uh, I'll just save this. There you go. Okay, so uh, I hope you guys are ready with pen and paper. Type in PP if you are ready with pen and paper because there will be a lot of notes to be taken care of and you guys must be attentive. Okay, so uh, make sure you are having pen and paper ready. Just type in PP in the chat box. Yeah, good. Good, 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 good. I'm getting feedback. So that's a good thing. Consider this as a live class and we'll be finishing sharp at 9.30. Okay. So it's going to be a 90 minute session and we'll make sure that we finish on time. Uh, okay. I can see uh, some of you have access to chat. Some of you don't have access to chat, but it's perfectly fine. Welcome Disha. Thanks for joining in. Uh, she just made a call this morning and uh, she was very prompt and joined in. So thanks a lot. Okay, so this is what we are going to uh, cover in our session, today's session. First topic is what is engineering? I know this is very rudimentary, but we will still make sure we cover it. Uh, why do we need CAE, computer aided engineering? So I'm directly going to jump on to the topic of CAE. Okay, I'm not going to be uh, taking a longer route. What is model? What is a prototype? We will define it. Okay, so you are going to learn too many things. It's an intro session, first session. We call it as a session number zero. Uh, what are three important parts or techniques or uh, I'll not say techniques for three important or distinct parts of CAE. That's what we are preprocessor, solver and postprocessor. We'll discuss in detail. Uh, what is a dynamic loading? Uh, another detailed discussion we will have. Why LS Dyna is a gold standard for crashworthiness analysis and why we should be progressing with uh, crashworthiness analysis. That's what we are going to discuss. Uh, then career path, how exactly, what are the salary ranges, how exactly you grow, what are the struggles, what is it uh, which is different than an IT company, even if it feels like an IT environment, it's really not an IT environment to be very frank. Uh, what is LNO's offering, what is it that we are going to offer to you, what are the advantages of joining hands with an industrial mentor like me, uh, so I'll introduce myself at that particular point. Uh, open question and answer, whatever questions you have, and there will be offers, uh, which are going to be limited only for five days. Okay. Sounds good. Excited type in E if you are excited for the session E in the chat box, because that's the easiest way of, uh, getting a feedback. Okay. Uh, it's the easiest way to connect you guys. Fine. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot guys. Okay. So let's start with what is engineering. Uh, this is the basic uh, discussion we will have. So you can see three images here. One is research, second is engineering, third is end product. Okay. And if we go for uh, this kind of an understanding where you will have a lot of research done. Okay. A lot of research done is going to actualize or convert that particular research into an end product. Okay. Uh, fine. Fine. I'll just disable this annotation for others. Uh, it's okay. I'll just remove the annotations as well. Uh, clear all. Yeah, there you go. So the, you may not accidentally just drag on it. Okay. So you'll have a research and end product and there will be a bridge who will be engineered. So there was a research about electromagnetism, but user was in a continuous search of airflow, the engineer has to come in and they will have to understand various materials, constraints, parameters, and other bit, and they will 
have to build an in product it's the simplest definition of an engineer so you'll have a uh, uh, you will have a research wing which is having no constraint of time okay the ma major difference between a research and an engineer is there will be no constraint of time and money here you will always have time and money constraints am i right so you cannot have a metro project running for uh, 20 years you are just constructing it for 20 years there will be so much of a traffic that metro is not viable so it is very important to have time constraint as well as money constraint for an engineer there is no time constraint and money constraint for the researcher okay the the essence is an end user is always going to drive an engineer okay so there will be uh, sales guys there will be market researchers who are going to talk to the consumers so let's say for example there was someone who created this digital pen okay you can see it very clearly so someone who created this digital pen will have a user data okay he will have who has purchased this kind of a pen at the initial level and then they will go for uh, they will chase for feedback what is good what is bad uh, what needs to be improved all these things and then there will be a version 2 and that will be even more better than version 1 because they listen to the customer so end user is always going to drive an engineer that's an essence now why i i started with what is engineering you will come to know we need cie because the product development is driven by whom it is all driven by consumer and consumer needs a product at a fastest speed okay consumer needs product at a fastest speed how you can deliver a product at a faster rate you can deliver it by following a simple technique what is the technique of a product development you may be knowing it i'll just uh, reiterate there will be concept okay for example let's take an example of a car manufacturer so uh, there will be a concept which is going to be let's say building a coupe or building a sedan or building a, a let's say building an suv and that's just a concept so they will come up with some sizes some width some lengths how many people are going to sit is it going to be a five seater is it going to be a seven seater so this is all a concept then uh, whether it will be an ev whether it will be a diesel engine car or a petrol engine car all or three etc uh, etc et then it comes to engineering okay and then what is going to happen uh, it is all going to be divided as three important things one is 3d cad then there is a ca department and then there is a proto department okay so we will learn what is prototype but in engineering there will be a cad visualization 3d visualization ca which is virtual testing and a prototype which is a real product but in a much smaller scale scale in the sense production scale i'm not talking about the size scaling i'm talking about production scale scale so it can be like 10 or 15 or 20 products not more than that so from concept to the prototype we play ca engineers play a very crucial role they will talk to cad guys they will also talk to prototype guys they will also talk to uh cad proto and the production guys okay so there will be a production uh, department which is going to ready themselves for tooling for uh, overall assembly line and sequence and what not okay so this is what is the entire scenario of concept to product okay so you have product development which is inherently having a cie department now what is happening i'll add another slide what is happening in current scenario the yesterday's linkedin live was also about that the current scenario is cie driven design okay and this is real thing it's not something which is in future this is happening what do you mean by that 
earlier there was a complete cad cycle so there was a version 1 being created for cad and then there was a ca test being done now it's little different you have a basic cad ready then you start doing uh, computer aided engineering that is virtual testing you keep on improving your cad based on the basic results which you get so it all goes in parallel and you save an exuberant amount of time to market okay so the key here is these phrases are very important so if you want to take it down time to market is an extreme important concept so if you have least time to market you are going to kill the competition okay and it can be top hat design for automotive it is all very uh, what you can say relevant but for defense also it is getting more and more relevant for consumer products also it is getting more and more relevant the best example of least time to market is mobile phones am i right do you agree type in agree if you agree there is for every single week there is a launch am i right you have launch from every single manufacturer who is there in the mobile space so time to market is the least for these mobile companies do you agree type in agree if you agree on this okay and then we will have a simple poll i'm going to have a poll about uh, the overall audience all right okay so let me just give you oops Uh, tuk, tuk, tuk. Oh, okay. So I have three different polls. That's fine. So this poll is untitled, but don't worry. Uh, you, yeah, there you go. So the first poll is. I'll just launch it. Can you see this, guys? Uh, just try and answer. We are not a big group. We are only seventeen people, but that's okay. And those who are on YouTube, you can just keep on connecting me on LinkedIn. uh or you can just uh, make sure you join in uh, uh join in using uh, zoom if you don't have a zoom call then there is no other option but just try and answer this if you can see the poll the poll is asking about a, a typical demography of what you are are you a fresher are you a graduate student are you a cad working professional are you a ca machining engineer are you a manufacturing or a purchase side guy or are you someone who is other than that so it can be a teaching uh, or a professor level or an educational or academic level uh, guy or someone who is not in manufacturing not in purchase but in sales or some other department so just try and answer it oh, i only got seven feedbacks out of 18 Uh, eight feedbacks nine feedback so just uh, try and answer this so we can i'll just launch this or i'll just uh, showcase these polls uh, at an easy interval okay so we have some equal percentage of freshers and graduate students that's a very good sign there are some ca engineers that's another good sign there are some others i will ask them what they do for sure so uh, let's let's try and understand this then 15 answers i got out of 18 16 answers okay good so i'll just stop this poll and i'll just uh, display the results to you guys so can you see the results on screen visible yeah students so that means graduate students so someone who is other it's like graduate students visible right so there are students there are freshers there are ca engineers there is no one who is working in cad and there are others okay good so thanks a lot for uh, replies and there is one more poll uh, let me go for another poll yeah there you go so have you uh, came across any ca tool yet anything about ca you may have learned ansys you may have learned uh, let's say hypermesh or You may have heard about Nastran, LS Dyna, Radios, anything. So there are eleven people who have already come across something sort of CA. Twelve people. Wow, that's a good one. Thirteen. So you guys know a little bit about what exactly CA does. So I'll just try and give you more and in more information about CA in uh, in the subsequent time. Okay, good. There you go. So this is the result. 
there are only two people who haven't come across any of this ea tool but there are 88% uh, of the population who come across who came across the uh, ca tool okay that's a good one okay and the last one have you attended any of my live session earlier wow so this is an entirely new crowd amazing okay good wow only one out of 15 uh, says that they attended a live session earlier other than that 14 out of 15 they are the first time listeners so many thanks to you guys these are the results you can see them uh, that that was the last poll i will not be going for a poll i just made sure that you wake up from whatever is happening okay good nice to see that and uh, let me come back to the discussion okay so the discussion was about ca driven design i will try and explain it more and more uh, in a detailed way so let's talk about what is a model what is a prototype okay and let me give a simple definition of model and a prototype okay so i'll define prototype first model will be automatically getting defined uh, in a simple way so what is a prototype one as to one working model is a proto and what is a model i'll just write down uh, characteristics so it is scalable may or may not work may or may not work fine so uh, we have these two definitions i'll give you a quiz uh, you have to be ready on your uh, chat box are you ready type in ready r if you are ready i'll just put a simple picture in front of you and you have to answer which one is the model which one is the prototype so if right one is the uh, prototype you write down right p rp right one is a prototype or you can write left as a prototype so r or l so you have to answer which one is the prototype right or left okay so you can write r or you can write l so here you go which one is a prototype based on this definition i will just give you a definition again prototype is one as to one working model model is it can be scaled it can be it may or may not work okay so you can see left one or right one which one is a prototype left is a proto okay someone says disha says a uh, right is a prototype uh shadmuga says right is a prototype mayank says right is a prototype left is a prototype nandan okay good uh then there is left who who has given left as an answer uh thangedi says uh, left as a prototype okay good that's nice uh who else is there mohammed says left is a prototype setupati says left is a prototype mohammed says Uh, or prashant says left is a prototype shrinivas says left is a prototype okay so guys what is the definition prototype is working model that means it must work it must be functional the right one is clearly a non functional thing why because it doesn't have a working grill you can see that even if it's an ev you still have something to air flow for cooling and other bit you can see door mirror is being replaced by some cameras it's going to be there in future but not right now uh this entire thing is called as a model so it is one as to one but it's for sure not going to work okay it is one as to one but it is for sure not going to work whereas this one is for sure a prototype are you with me type in with you w u if you understand the concept of model and a prototype okay so those who answered maximum most of you guys answered right as a prototype that's not correct the left one is a prototype because it's working it's there on road it's on a testing track it has some camouflaging done but it's on a testing track that means it is 
a one as to one working model. Okay. So when you go for, let's say, let's take a simple example of uh, a wind tunnel testing. Okay. So for example, you are in a Boeing uh, seven new seven four seven team something seven four seven eight hundred maybe. What is it that you are going to test in a wind tunnel? Is it going to be a model or is it going to be a prototype? What will you test in a wind tunnel? Will that be a model which you are going to test or will that be a prototype which you are going to test? Yes, absolutely right. So why? Because it is scaled. As soon as you scale something, even if it works, for example, you have an RC radio controlled aircrafts, they work, but they are scaled. Even if they are going to be one as to one, they still are not going to carry anyone. So they are still considered as models. Okay. So you'll never call anything as scaled prototype. Am I right? You never uh, must haven't heard anything like this. It's all going to be a scaled model. You can scale a model. Scale prototype is not a concept. Make sense. Clear everyone learning something type in learning. If you are learning something type in L if you are learning something. So you have to figure out, you have to figure out what are the things which are models and what are the things which are prototypes. So let, let me just come across or give you some more important update here. We call something which is a 3D one or a 3D representation on computer as CAD model. Okay. But we never call anything as CAE model. Okay. We only call CAD as a model because it's not working. It's not going to work. It's not going to have the real material properties, connectivity, stiffness. It's not going to have connections. Nothing is going to be there for a CAE. It is all going to be a CAE overall, what you can call it as CAE file. Okay. So it is going to be a virtual prototype. What do you mean by this? You are not going to scale it. As soon as you call it as a prototype, it is going to be one as to one. It is going to work. That means if I am going to have, uh, let me just jump on uh, two or three slides up. Uh, let me just show you this. Okay. So this is a mind blast uh, analysis done using LS Dyna. You can see the uh, see the video. Now what is happening? This is one s to one in CAE as well. So if I measure something in LS Prepost or in Hypermesh, uh, the length of this entire truck it's going to come as that of the actual truck. Let's say four meters or four and a half meters or five meters, whatever it is. The height will be same, mass will be same. But in CAD, it is, even if it measures one s to one. It actually doesn't have any stiffness. It's just a model. Okay. So that's the important difference between model and a prototype. Clear everyone. Do you want it? Uh, do you want me to keep this screen on and do you want to write it down? I'll give you 30 seconds to write it down. Type in done. If you are done writing this, I want you to take this down. It doesn't matter where you are, but you just have to understand what is model. What is prototype type in done. Once you are done writing, Srinivas Kamal says done. Good. Nice. Okay. Take your time. What is model? What is prototype? Define it in your own words. Maybe in your own language doesn't matter. I'm talking in English. That doesn't mean you should not write it down in any of the language, Marathi, Hindi, Punjabi, Telugu, any language you, uh, you are speaking in not an issue. Okay. Good. This, uh, I think this example will give you a very clear picture about what is model, what is prototype. So whenever you go into a display area, uh, you are uh, for an auto expo or for anything, you will see a full size car, but it may or may not work. And that's called as a model. But when you see anything, which is a camouflaged vehicle, which is this black and white stripes or uh, running on a road, it is hundred percent a prototype. 
okay that's what it is good thank you very much guys let's move on so we discussed about it now we'll talk about cae process okay but before that uh, let me give you a simple quiz the name eleno is related to cae can can anyone figure out what is what is this eleno stands for it has no meaning to be very frank guys just give a wild guess what is cae anything comes in your mind okay elements and nodes yes nandan thanks a lot it is elements and nodes which are key uh, what you can say key parameters or key fundamental things in any computer aided engineering tool so what is element what is node i'll just show you that okay did it stop working that's strange okay let me reset there you go okay so uh if i just draw nodes and element you must have seen this meshing because i got answer that uh, only one or two people haven't heard anything about cae so all of you must be having this idea called meshing so you have these are nodes which are carrying mass and these are elements which are going to carry stiffness so the company name is elements and nodes and that's why uh, it is all related to cae so uh, let me give you a simple ca process it's very simple a ca consists of three important things pre processor solver and post processor okay so there are various tools here uh, the tools can be infinite there can be any number of tools which you can use solvers are not that much okay pre processors post processors are there quite a bit but solvers are uh, very limited okay so there will be two types of solver we are talking about cae as a whole which consists of finite element method discrete element method uh, cfd which is computational fluid dynamic uh, it also consists of uh, let's say uh, sph sphere particle hydrodynamic electromagnetism all these things are called as computer aided engineering okay and what we have as a discussion topic today is finite element method okay and that too with dynamic solver explicit dynamic solver okay so there will be pre processors like hypermesh or ansa or ls prepost or uh, you have uh, meshwork etc etc okay there are many pre processors there will be post processors which are hyperview uh, meta post uh, primer uh, sorry primer will be here as a pre processor there will be d3 plot which is going to be another post processor and solvers will be abacus ls dyna radios uh, nastran uh, all these things are going to be solver so we will touch base on every single bit don't worry now what i want to convey is the entire cae process must consist of a pre processor must consist of a solver must consist of a post processor it's not like a cad where you are just going to learn one tool and you are going to be expert in it it's not like that first of all for cae you should not be a tool expert at the first level you should be a solution expert what do i mean by this you should be actually able to provide a solution based on the results which you are going to get as simple as that so what is happening in pre processor that we will try and discuss first thing what do you do in pre processor i'll write it down in single page only post processor 
solver and sorry preprocessor solver and post processor what do we do in preprocessing we do discretization which is a scientific wording for meshing okay we do discretization we do small parts we do import cad into a preprocessor okay in hypermesh we import igs file or a step file or a katia file so we import cad we give we get cad as an input we do discretization we assign materials we assign boundary conditions we assign uh, various sections okay and uh, then we assign control cards database cards etc etc all these things we do in a preprocessor then we take this file and we put it in a solver so it can be any solver the file has to be prepared for that solver from first step itself so it can be ls dyna it can be hype, uh, it can be radios it can be abacus it can be uh, adams it can be nastran anything or pam crash or any any other solver whatever you think about so this preprocessor is going to give an input to the solver the solver has no graphical user interface remember this it's just a solver that means it has all black and white lines it's just going to do a lot of computation okay and then what we have is a post processor what do uh, what do we do or what we make use of a post processor is the files generated by solver are going to be taken inside a post processor and there will be stress analysis displacement results plotting velocity analysis acceleration plotting g loadings all these things are done using post processor so to give you an example if you uh, uh, i showed you this uh, explosion or blast stuff let me just show you this seating system stuff as well so whatever you see here this is a stress plot and this is being generated from a post processor so who solved the results these results were solved by a solver and they were post processed using a post processor so whatever you see here as an animation file for a frontal impact this file is generated using post processor but the entire calculation was done by solver are you with me guys make sense type in make sense if this is making sense what is a pre processor what is a solver what is a post processor is it making sense type in ms if this is making sense make sense okay clear so based on this entire discussion you should be in a clear condition of your mind that only pre processor will not give you job only solver knowledge will never give you job and only post processor is 100% useless what you need to do is learn the entire stuff you have to learn pre processor you have to learn solver side you have to learn post processing side okay so the entire package can be combination of two or three different things it's not going to be an a single package so you learn ansys but ansys also has pre processing solving and post processing even if you are not going to do it in a different way it's still there so industry never uses solver or inbuilt pre processor which is supplied by solver industry always uses something which is a dedicated tool okay so not everywhere for example let's say you are in a mining industry so you are not going to use only the excavator and backhoe loader and this this combination a jcb combination what do you will have you will have specialized tools you will have excavators they will only do excavation you will have loaders they will only do loading you will have uh, uh, the trucks which are going to carry the uh, ore they will only carry the ore are you getting me getting this point so what what is it that we are going to do we are going to learn every single thing which is relevant to the industry in this entire course okay so uh, the ca process consists of uh, what i wanted to convey to you is the ca process consists of a pre processor a solver and a post processor and all three are important to become a ca analyst or a finite element analyst fine okay so let's move on with the next topic 
who are the users of ls dyna what is exactly ls dyna why i am focusing more on ls dyna what is this explicit dynamic uh, time dependent domain let's try and discuss this so first we understood what is a bigger picture which is called cae now uh, there is a blank slide i want to give some guidance to uh, to the students who are looking to build a career okay so first of all you should not be don't choose a tool you should not be a tool operator don't choose a tool what you are supposed to choose as a career option choose domain and when i say domain i am talking about product domain okay what are you supposed to choose you are supposed to choose a product domain so what are the product domains it can be automotive it can be defense it can be railways it can be uh, off highway equipments it can be agri equipments it can be naval design okay so this is something which should come from your own interest so if you are interested in automotive then you can explore what are the various techniques or what are the various things which are done in automotive noise vibration harshness is there uh, bsr issues are there fatigue durability is there crash is there static analysis is there so this all comes in auto then you have railways where you will again have crash you will have nvh you will have durability fatigue and survivability etc etc then you will have defense domain where you will have blast analysis you will have high speed impact you will have bullet penetration all these things are going to come there there will be significant amount of g loading shock loading etc etc then you have how of highway where crash is not at all relevant crash is not relevant so nobody is going to absorb you if you learn ls dyna in off highway equipment there will be durability fatigue static loading etc etc you have agri equipment again crash is irrelevant no need to learn crash if you are uh, about to enter into off highway equipment naval yes underwater blast high speed impact all these things are relevant things nvh is relevant thing all these things are going to be uh, supposed to be understood by the student who is going to decide a domain so if you are going to decide a defense domain or a naval domain or an automotive domain you are supposed to fix on it okay don't look at the tools if you choose a tool you are going to become a tool expert a tool operator and then your job will be at stake after 3 4 5 years if you choose a domain if you choose a product product never fails product never goes away if it is an automotive product the segment is going to evolve from let's say ic engine to electric vehicle but i will never call it as an electric vehicle uh, domain it's not just a combination of a few things here and there and your automotive is safe the crash is an inevitable part of an automobile industry and that's why i would suggest you guys to go for automotive crash okay where i will be mentoring you and other bit or if you want to go you can go into a defense uh, defense part all these things are going to be decided by the domain so if you choose a tool there was a question yesterday in a linkedin live uh, can i learn ansys workbench that was a direct question to me uh, and i explained the entire thing to those guys as well that if you choose a tool first you will become a tool operator why do you want to learn ansys workbench do you want to provide solution in defense domain do you want to provide solution in automotive domain if it is automotive ansys is used nowhere no one uses ansys if it is let's say off highway or something ansys has a good use if it is uh, let's say uh, something which is aerospace there are nastran and other solvers which are being used if it is defense it's predominantly ls dyna if it is automotive crash it is predominantly ls dyna if it is fatigue durability in automotive it is predominantly abacus guys are you with me is it clear type in clear if this is clear if you are going to choose a tool first you are going to get into a trap there are educational startups who are misguiding students to choose five six seven different tools and they are just going to make you a tool operator why i am still surviving and thriving in automotive industry or a defense industry even after 17 years the reason is i am 
an expert in one domain, which is automotive seating system domain. I will not call myself as an expert in defense technology, but I am expert in automotive seating system domain. That is going to give me an advantage because I will be a specialist. I am not going to be a generalist. Make sense? Clear everyone? So don't choose a tool. There will be constant bombarding. There will be too many advertisements. There will be fancy marketing material, but there will not be a mentor. And that's something which is not going to give you a guiding hand. They will just give you a software training, a tool training, and you guys will be in a trap. Okay. So don't choose that. Okay. Make sure that you are, you are first deciding the domain and then only you are going to choose a tool. Okay. That's a pledge you guys have to take. So I just uh, uh, took a little more time to explain this particular part, but I felt this was important. So who are users of LS Dyna? Predominantly automotive and defense. Okay. I'll be very frank. So if you, if you are fixing yourself to automotive or a defense side, you will be in a position to understand LS Dyna in a better way. Okay. If you have chosen this, these two domains or even naval for that matter, but it's okay. Automotive or defense in automotive, it will be for crash. It will be for static for defense. It will be for blast. It will be for impact. It will be for shock. Okay. And these tests are extremely important to make sure product survives in automotive. Occupant safety is the most important criteria in defense. Also occupant safety is the most important criteria, but the load cases are different. Am I right? It's just going to be crash. You are not going to test a regular automotive for a bullet penetration. And you are not going to test a defense vehicle only for crash. You will test it for bullet penetration or a blast or blah, blah, blah. Any other stuff makes sense. So who are users of LS Dyna? Users of LS Dyna are automotive and defense. In defense, I will again go for a defense aerospace or a basic aerospace where in aerospace, typically engines and the, uh, and the wing area, there will be bird strike, which is an extreme important load case to be carried out or understood. And there is a blade contamination test. Okay. So you have automotive and defense. There will be a uh, crash analysis, static analysis, which you can do using LS Dyna in defense. You will have blast impact uh, shock and in aerospace, you will have bird strike build, blade contamination, etc., etc. Okay. Now, apart from this, LS Dyna has a distinct advantage of explicit implicit combination in one solver. When I say one solver, one package, I will call it not one solver. So they are entirely two different solving techniques, implicit and explicit, but in a single model, you can just have two or three control cards replaced and you will convert an entire explicit time domain model into a pure static model. And without doing any material change, any hectic uh, modifications, you will be in a position to switch your model from explicit calculation to implicit calculation. That's an extremely important advantage in current scenario. Okay. So this is all about who are the users of LS Dyna. Okay. Now I have given a definition of what is a dynamic load. Okay. What is a dynamic load load, which changes its magnitude and or direction with respect to time is a dynamic load. Can I give you an example of a dynamic load? Okay. Let me give you an example of a dynamic load. Just remember this definition. I will repeat it load which changes its magnitude and or direction. So it can change its magnitude. It can change its direction or it is changing both of them with respect to time. This is extremely important. Okay. Then we call it as a dynamic load. So for example, if you have a belt and pulley arrangement or, uh, or let's say I don't have a belt, I have just a pulley here. And uh, uh, sorry about the drawing guys. This is very slippery. Uh, my drawing is pretty good. So let's say this is uh, a section uh, which I have. This is a pulley. Consider this as a symmetric one. Okay. This is a pulley. And uh, the side view looks like this. Okay. And uh, let's imagine this shaft is uh, held in a bearing. Okay. So it's a fixed beam. Am I right? Yes or no? 
this is not a simply supported beam correct so if it is uh, in a bearing uh, you don't have anything uh, where you will have moments equal to zero at the support you will have maximum moment at support so this is a bearing where you will have uh, fixation duct so this is a fixed beam the mass of the pulley is going to be let's say 300 kg okay and it is rotating at a constant rpm of let's say 300 rpm same value i'll take okay there is no load it's 100% balanced the load on shaft is static or dynamic if this is the case load on shaft is static or dynamic let me see who can answer if it is static type in s if it is dynamic load type in d simple nandan says it's a dynamic load is load changing its magnitude it's 300 kg pulley right so the answer is it's not changing the magnitude okay is it changing the direction no so this is a pure static load case guys are you with me understanding this part so you have a clear understanding that even if there is a rotation even if there is uh, some kind of a motion it doesn't mean that load is dynamic the load is 300 kg there is a constant rpm without any change in balancing so there is no uh, effect at all so it's only going to exert 300 kg at the center of the shaft and it is going to be a pure static load yes or no type in yes if this is a static load if you think that it is a static load now what will happen what i said vikas i told you that it's a constant rpm so there is no no uh, uh, no confusion about it the input is given as 300 rpm fine and even if it is let's say it is raising from 300 to 400 will it make a lot of difference just think about it imagine you have a ceiling fan which is on a hook you increase the uh, load the initial torque is going to give you some dynamic effect but will it make any difference is mass of the uh, fan changing the drag is going to change but it's going to anyway act on a hook okay so if i have an imbalance at a radius with m dash i will be getting m dash r omega square as an imbalance mass am i right or it is a centrifugal force and what is it that it is going to do it is continuously going to change its direction the magnitude will remain m dash r omega square but it is continuously going to change its direction yes or no so you'll have a continuous change in direction when it comes to an imbalance mass and then the load on bearings will be a pure dynamic load makes sense do you understand this example of a dynamic load and a static load clear guys so write down this definition of a dynamic load because we are going to solve problems which are 100% dynamic using lsi okay perfect so let's go to uh, this definition of an explicit code so what is an explicit code it is a numerical method used to solve okay a dynamic load problem and which type of numerical method it's going to be a direct solving numerical method used to solve a dynamic load problem that particular method will be called as explicit code so we are going to talk about it in a very detailed way if you join the course that's going to happen okay don't worry about it but you can just have a basic introduction of what is an explicit code it is a direct solving method which is being used to solve a dynamic load problem so direct solving is one type of a numerical method so there are two types of numerical methods one is a iterative method other is a direct solving method so we are using a direct solving method to solve a dynamic load case we call it as an explicit 
कोड क्लियर मेक सेंस हंड्रेड परसेंट अंडरस्टूड वॉट इज हैपनिंग गाइज आर यू विथ मी क्लियर ओके टाइप इन क्लियर इफ दिस इज क्लियर सो आई कैन जस्ट मूव ऑन टू सम फैंटेस्टिक एग्जाम्पल्स वी स्टिल हैव थर्टी मिनट्स टू गो बट फॉर नेक्स्ट टेन मिनट्स आई जस्ट हैव एग्जाम्पल्स एंड देन वी विल गो फॉरवर्ड विथ क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर एज वेल ओके सो लेट सी वॉट एल एस डाना कैन डू okay you you guys can see the screen uh, this is an offset frontal crash there is uh, an instrument panel knee impact analysis a head impact analysis when i say impact crash all these things are dynamic load cases which are being carried out in ls dyna so whatever you see here is uh, are all the student projects at lno not my credit these are all student projects at lno and i'm just showcasing them so this is what you will be capable of once you are through with the uh, ls dyna training okay so there is uh, this kind i'll show you some videos as well so this is a pedestrian impact which is another mtech level student project which we carried out so you can see uh, a standing dummy you can see a leg form what happens to so we are not concerned about what happens to the vehicle structure we are concerned about what happens to the human body or human uh, leg form so there should not be a, a tibia uh, force which is exceeding tibia bone force or a femur bone force which is exceeding some values there should not be a huge acceleration etc etc okay so all these things are uh, supposed to be learned or we are going to learn in a cae master program the entire program okay so let me take you to this i, I already showed you this uh, in a post processing part but this is an entire seating system uh, domain Uh, just so you have energy plots you have force plots you have seat belt anchorage test where you have a quasi static load applied a dynamic load all these things are a uh, student project so this was a student project back in 2018 another mtech level project where we try to understand what happens if the steering is collapsible and what happens if the steering is not collapsible what happens if the belt is there the dummy is wearing the belt or an occupant is wearing the belt and there is a collapsible uh, steering wheel what if the uh, occupant is we not wearing the belt and uh, the steering is not collapsible so these permutations combinations and we studied uh, head acceleration chest acceleration uh, h point or thorax acceleration all these things we tried to understand there was a differentiation and this is what is uh, Are done by students after learning LS Dyna. Okay, uh, then this is another example of a, a rollover test. Of course, this is not a student project. This is kind of a commercial project. So there are ECER sixty six regulations. Okay, ECE that is Economic Commission of Europe. ECER sixty six. So you can simply go on Google and search for ECE Economic Commission of Europe. R sixty six is a regulation for bus rollover. So all buses. are supposed to be going under this regulatory test so when i say regulatory test it is mandatory you cannot skip it you must pass the test and then only your product will be available in the market make sense fine so this is what we do a defense engineering domain i showed you this there is no hull here okay there is nothing as a protection no protection and Uh, this is a civilian vehicle so if you want to just protect this civilian vehicle in a little bit you can actually see this green one is a hull okay and you can see the dummy movements are less the dummy acceleration is less there is some safeguarding i will not say that this is a pure safeguarding for mine protection but this is what happens or this is what a student can again this was an mtech level student project for understanding what happens to the occupant if there is a mine blast and if we have uh, this kind of a hull and what happens if you don't have a hull it's a direct impact on the vehicle okay then we have this as a commercial project which is <coughs> uh this is an autonomous vehicle it doesn't carry any occupants uh it's kind of a, a gps guided uh, vehicle which is going to go into the field a war zone and it's going to give supplies uh, it can be ammunition it can be food it can be anything and this if it just uh, goes haywire if it is not in control and if it hits on to the wall 
what happens that's what we try to understand so this was a commercial project for one of the company a surveillance vehicle we call it this is another defense project where you can see this is not a bullet this is a bunker penetrator so it's quite large it having a 200 mm diameter and uh, of course this is not an actual geometry i am not allowed to show that but this is a bunker which is having a width of 2 meter so you can imagine a 6 feet wide bunker a wall is 6 feet wide and this entire thing is getting penetrated and it should explore explode inside the bunker it should not explode here it's of no use it should explode inside the bunker so it's called bunker penetrator the uh, bomb which you can search is spice 2000 which we uh, fired in balakot okay uh, so that's a relevant example for you then you have uh, these are some defense applications there are uh, the hammers which are running there are uh, some uh, flails and other bit uh, there are blast and uh, other Uh, electromagnetic stuff which is going on so all these things you can explore by yourself once you learn foundations of lsdi okay so most of them are defense uh, related things are most of them are live projects uh, some of them are student projects for, for but for automotive almost all of them are uh, student projects so that is something which you can do this is an interesting domain this is called as crash related gates vehicle security barriers so there can be bollards there can be gates there can be sliding gates there can be folding gates and you can actually see the truck at a uh, mass uh, which is having a mass of 7 and a half ton hits on to this gate at 80 kilometers per hour that's a huge kinetic energy and the gate has to survive that means it should not allow this vehicle to pass through okay it should make sure that the secured barrier remains a secured barrier so it can be used for five star hotels or an embassy or for uh, thermonuclear power plants or anything which is very high security okay so this is only possible using explicit dynamic tool it's not possible to take a static equivalent of it and apply a load you will not get the correct results uh, you can see this Uh, these are all the security barriers as per some regulation so there are regulations of course this is not a mass market application but these applications are quite critical okay then you have uh, uh, these uh, before i go for ls dyna foundation course uh, stuff uh, i would like to uh, allow you guys to ask me some questions about these examples do you find them interesting i pin these examples are interesting if you find them interesting there is defense application I, i try to showcase in a short while uh, what is happening in defense what is happening in uh, automotive what is happening in non automotive domain all these things are there is it is it interesting type in i if this is interesting interesting right yeah so why i am pushing this particular thing forward what is my mission i have my company where we have engineering services getting supplied uh, to clients why i am still doing training the reason is there is a constant need of good engineers and the problem with current uh, scenario is everyone is running behind something which is not proven that much ai ml and other bit it's absolutely necessary but fundamental mechanical knowledge the physics part and the designing part is not going to go anywhere okay it's all about building components making sure that you are building few things and that's what you do okay so this is extremely important field where you will have a very good scope okay so before i go for the uh, 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 this structure fee structure i'll go for a career path so i'll give you my example i started as a get graduate engineering trainee in tata johnson control back in 2005 okay i'll give you a simple example a clear example and i had let's say i had an x salary there back then let's consider it as a zero time for time equal to 1 year 2 years so t plus 1 t plus 2 t plus 3 my salary was pretty linear 
it was gro uh, growing pretty pretty linear it was not exuberant it was not uh, as compared to uh, uh, it market it was much lesser but i was still there in cae from day one in ls dyna in crash domain what happened afterwards is because i was putting all my efforts to learn and not my efforts to switch what happened is there was a sharp rise in salary for fourth year fifth year sixth year okay even it it just got stagnated for few years maybe seventh or eighth year and then i quit okay then i started my uh, entrepreneurial journey but you guys can understand why there is a difference between a it professional salary and a mechanical guy salary the reason is there is a huge investment required in terms of training in terms of softwares from the employer to make sure employee comes to a level after 1 2 or 3 years okay i'm talking about a product company i'm talking about a serious player i'm not talking about someone who is only doing meshing i'm not talking about someone uh, some company who is only doing a basic stuff and they call themselves as a cae company that's not what we are looking forward to so you have this as a a career path now this is all about salary that's not all what you need to understand also is there is a vertical growth this we call it as horizontal growth what is vertical growth moving up in a hierarchy so you start with a get so what i what happened in 8 years of my uh, career is i started as a get then i became a analyst cae analyst okay then it was oh i'm sorry analyst then it was senior cae analyst then it was lead engineer then it was senior lead and i quit as manager making sense so this is how you grow in a vertical direction and you also grow in a horizontal direction making sense okay so let's come to what is it that we are going to cover in live foundation course which is extremely important uh, for any engineer to go forward so we are going to uh, uh, divide it in 20 odd sessions it never finishes in 20 session it always goes to 35 to 40 sessions but there are few sessions which are recorded so we will be still finishing it in 3 months when i say 3 months it is 100% a weekend course okay remember this it is 100% a weekend course we will be meeting a uh, similar time maybe 8 o'clock or 7:30 every saturday and sunday okay for 3 months that is 12 weeks or 12 weekends you can you can call it so don't uh, uh, don't misjudge this with lecture 20 means 20 hours it's not like that it may go to almost 40 odd sessions where there will be many sessions which are pre recorded and there will be too many sessions which are live because you can feel that i'm a live guy i i really want to interact in a live format i don't want it to be just a recorded format okay so there will be question and answer sessions there will be some quizzes there will be actual uh, evaluation of each and every guy there will be debugging sessions all these things will be live make sense so you will have live ls dyna foundation course which is going to last for 3 months and which is going to go for uh saturday sunday and uh, it may be 35 to 40 odd sessions make sense okay i think uh, my camera is it working can you see me I just quit this Uh, let me switch my camera guys so you have this entire i'll share this with you guys don't worry now uh, let's go to a student feedback there is a reason I, i'll explain you why this student feedback is important uh, wait a second so i will have to share my sound yeah 
I'm Pradeep. Yeah. Can you hear Pradeep? Say hi to Pradeep. And he is a defense guy. Okay. So he learned from me. We are to Pune. And I have underwent LS Dyna course, online course during this lockdown. Oh, one second. Okay, I think I lost the connection. Yeah, am I audible now? Audible, visible? Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Lost my connection. I just switched it. So uh, let's go to Pradeep. Let's go back to Pradeep. And let's hear it from Ms. Let's just share my sound. Um, and which I should have this strong foundation more than software because software runs based just basically on the physics and the mechanical theorems, theories on which are already framed, which everyone should realize. And I realized it after undergoing this course. And Crossings and I really enjoyed the model checking sessions and problem solving and online hands on sessions which were conducted in the program. Very interesting, which I enjoyed the most and which I learned a lot. And finally, I strongly recommend this course for all the aspirants who are willing to learn LS Dyna. You should go this course, go through this course, through LS, through Elino. Elino because Mr. Nachi is and, a master uh, and you need to learn from the master uh, to become a master. Labor. So I uh, got a job at the earliest. Uh, I divided feedback in a systematic way. So uh, what did you enjoy most about training? Learn the importance of basics of engineering and physics and simulation. Learn the importance of product knowledge. So that's an important thing for anyone to get a job. What well, according to you are the major benefits? Uh, gain basics of crash simulation and LS Dyna interface and learn additional LSPP for pre and post processing. Got insights on what skills need to be developed to be a successful crash and safety analyst. Okay. What are the key uh, takeaways? Learn LS Dyna, of course, understood various control cards, database cards. Understood various calculations and significance of uh, element size on explicit dynamic domain. Uh, why would you recommend this to other students? I strongly recommend my juniors to take this course if they willing to choose a crash and safety area. Okay, so that's a basic. I know, but I tried to divide it. So there is feedback from Rohit as well. 
too many feedbacks but i just don't want to uh, bog down you don't have to bog down based on the feedbacks the thing uh, why you should think about ls dyna is very simple what are the bonus classes so let's come to the bonus classes there is a 2000 rupees bonus class for basics of engineering so entire basics of engineering 40 hours course is going to be with you for lifetime once you enroll for uh, this uh, initial course for ls dyna bonus number 2 is ls pre post it's a free tool most valuable reason i have written it as most valuable training because ls pre post is free for all so the overall cost is around 3150 that's going to be bonus you don't have to pay for it bonus number 3 is seating system product training which is worth 6000 rupees and it's going to be a fantastic session for you to understand product i i explained you what is important the important thing is a product and first you have to understand what is a product and then only you can do a ca uh, the fourth uh, uh, bonus bonus number 4 is crack interview with confidence with me okay so i had little less hair back then uh, so i grew a little bit so you can see my picture this is me so you have crack interview with confidence which is all about what is an interview how you should focus focus on it what are the preparations you have to do it's going to be a very good bonus so there are five bonuses which you are going to uh, for which is going to cost around 15000 15000 rupees 16000 rupees okay uh, you must be deciding it as at the earliest there is five days uh, opening we call it uh, don't wait for five days for sure to get all the bonus classes and ls dyna foundation plus five bonus classes for i'll not say three days i'll still call it as five is going to be 36000 and so special price uh, i have increased prices for a very long time so it's still going to be continuation it is going to be 36999 all inclusive taxes everything included you can make a payment using credit card debit card upi whatever you need to be uh, doing a payment for and uh, uh, it's all going to be a weekend class as i uh, discussed earlier there is another class which is cai master program which will include ls dyna plus five bonus classes plus hypermesh training entire hypermesh training and a complete cai for seating system which is 10 or 11 different regulations Okay, it's going to be an extensive course. This course is going to be for six months. Okay, and this is going to cost you seventy-two thousand nine ninety-nine. Okay, this is going to cost you seventy-two thousand ninety-nine. The fees for CEO program are seventy-eight thousand nine ninety-nine, but we have purposefully made an arrangement to make sure you get it at a Six thousand rupees discount. Okay, if you join within five days, so we are going to practically start our sessions from next weekend. I'm going to give you time to rewatch this on YouTube. Uh, you can uh, you can always contact me anytime you wish to. So there is, as I said, we are going to start uh, not on November, not in the November, but it is going to be twenty four weeks. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, twelve. Uh, so for the course is going to be. 24 weeks ce master course for this it is going to be 12 weeks if you only want to do ls dyna course with five bonus classes you have intro session welcome session on next weekend so it is going to be on friday the day will be i'll just tell you the day and then we'll go for any number of question and answer so it is going to be friday 22nd of april 2022 okay at 9 pm we will have an intro welcome session where i'll give you all the accesses to all the courses uh, i'll give you a uh, software access because it's all free 
I don't take credit of it. It's all credit to Ensis, which is which bought LS Dyna back in 2020, and they made entire LS Dyna free for students. That's a good thing. You can learn from home. You don't have to come to Pune, but you are most welcome if you want to. Learn. So this is 100% online training. But if you want to do more practice, you are always welcome in our office. And you have a spread for practice. So always welcome. Okay, and then. Uh, the next is thank you. So now you can come to any questions you have, you can unmute and you can talk. Nandan, uh, my voice is not clear, guys. Of a video. Wait a second. Just... Can you guys hear me now? Is it audible? Audible? It's weak. How is this? Am I audible now? Okay, can I repeat this part? You can just uh, ask me to repeat whatever you want to repeat. I don't know what happened to internet table here, but uh, just look at what's going wrong. Okay, am I audible now? Yes, no. Did you understood what are the bonus classes and uh, what is it that we are going to do? And you have a time for five days to get enrolled for 36,999. That's what I tried to discuss. Make sense? Okay. So I'll just stop sharing. I'll just keep this uh, page alive or this presentation I can share, but, uh, if you have any questions, just go ahead and ask. Wow, we have uh, ISGI. I, uh, guys, can you type in from which city you are? Just to understand. I should have asked this question back. But from which city you guys are? Rajesh. Nandan is from Mysore. Wow. Pune. Prashant is from Pune. Good. Latur Lake. Okay, good. Presently in Pune, Rajesh. Perfect. Chennai. Yeah. You know you, sir. Disha, you are also uh, India, correct? That's what I. Kochi. Wow. Okay. Vikas is from Kochi. Good. Mayank. Roshan. Stuttgart. Okay. Good. Prakhar is from Stuttgart right now. That's nice. I'm from Ankara, Turkey. Wow. Okay. Good. Nice to have you here in the session. Thanks a lot for joining. Uh, Dhangedi is from Tokyo, Japan. Yeah, we had three students in batch number 2020 uh, from Japan. So they joined from Japan. It's very late there. Uh, very thankful to you. You are still uh, connected. It's, it's pretty late uh, in Japan, right? Panvel. Okay, Mayank is from Panvel. Perfect. Thanks a lot, guys. Any questions you have? Uh, you can just ask me by unmuting yourself or uh, you can simply uh, put a mail to me or you can just, yeah, Prashant, go ahead. I can see your raised hand. Yes, uh, Nandan. Uh, sir, I'm audible. Yes, you are audible, Prashant. Yes, uh, thank you, sir, for such a wonderful introductory session. You covered all basic points. Let it be engineering, why we need C, model prototype, then uh, users of LS Dyna, what is dynamic loading and horizontal and vertical growth. The the two points I like are like the C engineer is a solution provider and not only the tool operator. And yes. you are advised to focus on domain. So I have three questions. My first question is um, uh, you talked about the aspects of CA driven design. Mm -hmm. So what could be it? Like it is, is it morphing? We are talking uh, yeah, about it is one part is morphing. It's like two or three percent is morphing. It's not just morphing. It is the uh, the CA analyst has to give advice to a CAD guy 
to improve upon their designs so are you going to change the thickness are you going to change the material are you going to change the uh, section are you going to convert from let's say a circular section to a uh, square section that's the advice the basic level advice which a ca engineer gives back to a cad guy and that is called as a ca driven design okay okay fine that's a good answer actually the second thing is uh, recently the tata launch concept uh, curve curve uh, yeah so i just out of curiosity i just want to know what is the development cycle what is the time period that we could see this concept making uh, market it, it's not supposed to be more than 18 months for an automotive company now from concept to market it should be not more than one and a half years okay okay maximum one and a half years okay and what time is allotted for us for validation team uh it starts uh, uh, at let's say if it is 18 months at second or third month uh, ca interaction starts okay so it's very fast because there will be too many department it's not just going to be like an entire cad model will be ready for an entire car there will be various stages so doors will be there uh, frames will be there there will be uh, 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 an entire uh, underbody which is going to be developed so all things go in parallel so after let's say initial 2 months or 2 and 3 months it it all starts okay thank you and the last question is uh, you talk what about the uh, horizontal growth mm-hmm. so what could be the average percentage growth for two to first two to three years like uh, it's for, not is, going to be more than 20% 20% is okay. something which happens see initially if, imagine you have a starting salary of 3.6 lakh per annum so 30% or 20% of that is hardly uh, 72000 right yeah. so your package is not going to grow exuberantly but yeah the 20% initial first two or three years 20% percent, percentage wise they are large values but uh, uh, the amount wise okay. they are smaller values okay but okay. don't worry. see first five years if you want to be a serious guy if you really want to build a career here uh, first five years are only for learning if you are going okay. to jump okay. around it's not a creative field first of all okay it's not a creative there is a difference uh, it is more or less a creative field where you have too much of a freedom and the resources required are uh, way too less uh, c++ license is not more than 500 rupees so that never happens in any mechanical company the licensing cost for a ansa one seat for one year renewed every year is 10500 euros which is around 9 to 9 and a half lakh rupees so it's more than your ctc exactly exactly so yeah, thank software you software cost is too high that's why companies cannot afford to pay more to the employees okay i got it. yeah thank you for your uh, frank guidance thank you very much Okay, so as soon as you surf higher than the software cost, got my point, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, very good questions, uh, Prashant. I'm extremely happy. Uh, you asked uh, very relevant questions. So, Disha, if you have any questions, because you had few questions, uh, you are in third year, I think. So, you can go ahead if you have any questions. Roshan, Mayank, Vivek. uh vivek uh, did you find found this useful because we didn't had a long discussion on phone uh, this morning but uh, you have if you have any questions just go ahead vikas if you have rajesh if you have any questions just go ahead yeah nandan is asking a question on a chat as a fresher to get into cai field should we cover yes absolutely yes you should go in industry as a complete cai analyst if you learn hypermesh right now and join a company as a meshing engineer only based on hypermesh you are losing quite a bit of a time of learning so it is better that you invest entire 6 months of your time to learn hypermesh lsdyna and a post processor part 
and then only try and enter so we do assess for placement till you get placed there is no condition but there is no assurance from our side because it is all market dependent we don't want to misguide you guys so you will be getting the placement assistance till you get we have a good hr team we have priyanka madam we have jaydeep they are going to mentor you like hell and they'll make sure you are job ready after 6 months or before 6 months okay uh ls dyna is an entire cie suit but it is more or less a solver it's predominantly a solver ls dyna is a solver lspc creates ls pre post which is pre and post processor but it's a rudimentary one it is it is a free of cost uh, uh, pre and post processor whereas if you go for ls dyna it is a solver on which the entire pre and post processor is dependent on making sense all right good so uh anyone uh, if you don't have any further questions we can just call it a day i will be uh, sharing you guys an email with uh, uh, with the details of payments and how exactly you can proceed you can ask me any questions you have uh, in in uh, in email as well not a problem so as a solver we can use this in hyperworks yes so not this see you can use hypermesh for pre processing you can use ls dyna for solving and you can use hyper view for post processing getting my point so you have hyper mesh hyper view as alter suits hyperworks suits but ls dyna is going to be the solver not radios okay yep okay thanks a lot guys thanks for attending this session uh, i'm extremely happy that uh, you guys uh, learned few things uh, you guys enjoyed it there were very relevant questions from your side and uh, see you soon bye bye rajesh you are most welcome bye dhangedi most welcome bye mayank vivek prakash Vivek, if you have any questions, you can come down. Uh, you can always meet me tomorrow. I'm available in office. Okay. Bye, bye, Prashant. Bye, Roshan.